Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, it's near the lock. Colder outside than it is in the barn. Pull up your coat collar. It's up. I'm warm enough. Yeah, you sound it. <laughs> Golly, just think only three more days to Thanksgiving. Well, it should be cold. Say, David, are you sure Her Majesty the cow will be warm enough? You just said it was warmer in the barn. It was, and so sweet. Mm, I love the smell of a barn. I think maybe that's why I married you. Why? I must have known you'd like the smell of the barn. <laughs> you'd divorce me if I didn't. <laughs> On the spot. Come on, let's get back to the house. Oh, what's the hurry? It's a beautiful night. It's only about nine o'clock. We have nothing else to do until we go to bed. Mm, suppose not. You know, she seems very contented, doesn't she? She could be a lot of people. Mama, Bertha. There could only be one she, Her Majesty the Cow. She fits into our barns if she'd always been there. Hey, look. Mama must have started to fire in the fireplace. Oh, yeah. See the smoke coming out of the chimney? Oh, I love it. Look at the windows all cloudy with the warmth of the house. David, it's a kingdom and it's all ours. Yes, it's a kingdom with a mortgage. Oh, what's a mortgage between friends? You know, Thanksgiving seems like a holiday just for us this year. And Christmas, do you realize that Christmas is next? I realize. Gosh. I realize also that you're nothing but a baby yourself. You like me? Oh, you're not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, David. What? Nothing except standing here between the barn and the house, smoke coming out of the chimney, smell of hay. I could just bust. Now, why on earth would you want to do that? Because I feel I have to do something. Well, there's something you can do. What, darling? Come on in the house before your brain freezes. Oh, you. Whew. Good to be in. Mama! Claudia? What? I just wanted to know if you were here. Where else would I be? How's everything up at the barn? Just perfect. Here, give me your coat. I'll hang it up for you. This one. Thanks. Big of you. Oh, my hands are cold. Rub them. I can't. They're too cold. Let's see. Stiff. All around my mouth, too. The cold doesn't seem to affect your tongue. How your ears are getting pink. Will you please leave my ears alone? Oh, darling, you have such nice ears. You know, lots of men don't have nice ears. I wouldn't have married a man without nice ears. Well, at least mine seem to be good and strong, which is the most important factor in this marriage. Oh, you're so sweet. Just see that you don't talk them off. Well, if it isn't me own mother a setting by the fire. Oh, what a pretty picture. No home should be without such a picture. Or such a mother. You smell of the barn. Like it? I like it. Well, what a pretty picture, Mrs. Brown, sitting by the fire, knitting. Exactly what I just said. You're pulling my leg, David. <laughs> oh, Mama, it's such a beautiful night out. Her Majesty the Cow sends you her regards. I hope you conveyed her mine. We did, of course. Say, David, what are you going to do now? I am going to observe a moment of silence in honor of David Norton. Oh, dear. I'm going to light my pipe and then settle down for a nice evening by the fire. Oh, you know, this should be the whole world. Just this. Come here, Shakespeare. Come on, come on. I'll scratch your ears for you. Come your on. daughter, Mrs. Brown, has a thing about ears. Come here, you disobedient cat. He's asleep. His motor's going. She means he's purring, Whimsy. Here, listen. Listen. He's happy, too. Oh, golly, I'm getting sleepy already. Don't do that. It's coming in from the cold. <laughs> I can just curl up with Shakespeare by the fire and sleep and sleep and sleep. Well, go right ahead, darling. But try not to talk in your sleep. I never talk in my sleep. No, well, how do you know? Very funny. Let me see. How many days? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thir- three more days. Three more days. Do you realize that? Yes, it's already Thanksgiving. Gosh. You know, it's a nice sort of holiday. Not too much and still enough to be one. You know what she's talking about, David? I have no idea what she's talking about, so long as she's enjoying herself. 
Let her go ahead. You know perfectly talk. well what I'm talking about. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is Thanksgiving. I need a haircut. Listen, Shakespeare, I'm going to let you eat turkey on Thanksgiving, too. I don't trust these barbers up here, though. And, Shakespeare, I'm going to give you some white meat, because Thanksgiving only comes once a year. For cats? Mm, for cats. But for people, if they're lucky and they have a kingdom, it comes every day. Maybe I could cut it myself. Cut watch yourself. His hair, it? Mama. He's been having a running conversation with himself about his hair. Say, Mama, we better make out a menu for Thursday. We're not going to have a... Big business, are we? No, just us, Mama, you, Fritz, Bertha, I, and the bit. Ba- Say, that is a big business, isn't it? You know, it's Bobby's first Thanksgiving. <sighs> and we're just going to be family. Well, we'll, uh, we'll put up a sign. Nobody else allowed. Nobody else wanted. <laughs> For once, we're going to be very selfish, all right? All right. All right. Not one pang of conscience, either. Well, why should we have any conscience about it? It's... It isn't wrong to, to want Thanksgiving by ourselves. No, it certainly isn't. Just think, David, Thanksgiving on our own farm, in our own home. <sighs> what do we eat? Didn't you say turkey? Sweet potatoes with marshmallow on top. You mean marshmallow on top with a little sweet potato underneath? Ugh. <laughs> and chestnuts. We ought to have some chestnuts someplace. And nuts on the table, Mama. Apples and wine. And a green vegetable. Green vegetable? Do we have to have green vegetable on Thanksgiving? No, no green vegetable. No. We have to have it every other day of the year. You're absolutely right, David. No green vegetable wanted. We won't need a very large turkey. No, just about eight or nine pounds, I guess. I'll talk to the butcher about it tomorrow, Mama. But listen, maybe, maybe I ought to get a bigger turkey. We can have it cold. You'll have a small turkey, and then you won't have to eat turkey for two weeks afterwards. Turkey croquettes, turkey a la king, turkey hash, turkey cold, turkey hot. Turkey sandwiches, turkey, turkey, turkey. I love turkey till January. Then I love ham. Well, let's see. I guess that's all from the menu, hmm? I don't think we want anything else. I don't want anything or anybody. I feel like a caterpillar in a cocoon. The fuzzy kind. Mm, very fuzzy. Boy, listen to that fire. Mm, lovely, isn't it? I was thinking it'd be sort of lonesome up at the barn for the cow. In a few weeks, she'll have company. Well, at least he has that to think about. David, look. You can hardly see outside. The windows are so clouded up. Mm-hmm. Mm, winter is certainly going to be nice here. Oh, no. You want to get it? Telephone, what a bore. Oh, yeah, I'll get it. Hello. Hello. Why, Roger, hello. Uh, how are you, Claudia, my dear? Couldn't be better. David, it's Roger. Roger, what's up? Nothing. He just wants to talk to me. Don't you, Roger? Uh, don't I what? Want to talk to me. Well, of course I want to talk to you. <laughs> uh, who else is there to talk to? Oh, David, Mama, any number of people. Not as far as I'm concerned. Just you. Thank you. Well, uh, what's uh, been happening on the farm? Nothing. Everything. We have a roaring fire going. It's freezing cold outside. How is it in New York? Freezing cold outside. And dull and tedious inside. Oh, too bad. Um, your wife home? My wife? Yeah. Oh, no. No, she's she's visiting her sister in Chicago. Well, uh, is Jeffrey coming home for Thanksgiving? No, no, he's going to meet his mother in Chicago. Oh, well, that'll be nice. Do you like Chicago? Yes. Uh, yes, I, I suppose I do. Well? Well, um, how, how's the cow? Oh, she's fine, just standing around waiting for the blessed event. So are the rest of us. I hope you'll invite me for the occasion. We wouldn't think of having an occasion without inviting you, Roger. Would we, David? Wouldn't we what? Haven't you been listening? I have not. Well, how do you like that, Roger? David hasn't even been listening to our conversation. Good, good. I I, I like talking in private with my partner's wife. (laughs) Really, David, hearing one end of the conversation is most unsatisfactory. How's the baby, Claudia? Oh, Bobby's fine, perfect. We thought he was teething, but he wasn't, just a false alarm. Well, he'll teethe soon enough. Uh, Don't get impatient. Oh, I'm not. David, I I don't know why he called. This is the most peculiar conversation. Why don't you ask him? You mean bluntly? Yes, bluntly. Uh, what was that, Claudia? Oh, nothing, nothing, Roger. David was talking, and, and I, I was... I hope, uh, I hope we're going to have good weather all week. Yes, so do I. Thanksgiving week is, is so much easier when the weather's good. Easier for what? Stop eavesdropping. It should be just beautiful up at the farm. 
now in the crisp weather. In the evenings, they're almost the best of all. Take a bow, Daisy. You're, you're quite a little farmer, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> there are 11 of us, Roger, counting the animals in Fritz and Bertha. Good Lord. You sound like Noah's Ark. <laughs> you, uh, you having a big celebration on Thursday? Well, uh, turkey, you know, and... I'm, I'm not going to Chicago, I decided. Uh, couldn't face the trip. Oh? No. Flying's treacherous in this weather, and I loathe the train. It, it drains me completely. Well, then you, you, you'll be in New York? Well, I, I thought, uh, well, since I had all day, I, 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 I might drive up and wish a happy Thanksgiving to your son and, and cow. Oh, well, we, uh, oh, well, could you, Roger? Could you really make it on Thursday? I certainly could. What? what? Sure, dear, I thought we just decided. Well, uh, Roger, we didn't dare ask you because of the Chicago business. I mean, I took it for granted that you'd, I mean... Well, if you're going to be in New York, why, that's marvelous, because then you can be in Eastbrook with us. I'd love that. I'd love that more than anything else I could think of. As a matter of fact, I, I was sitting here in New York, and, hmm? well, I just took my courage in both hands and called you up and invited myself. I, I hope you don't mind. Mind, Roger. Your invitation is accepted with the greatest of pleasure. It's, it's so nice to know that somebody considers himself enough of a friend that, that he doesn't have to stand on ceremony. And he wants to see us, he just picks up the phone and calls me up. That's the way I feel, and I'm grateful you don't mind. Claudia, you tell me if I were interrupting something or interfering, wouldn't you? You know I would, Roger. See you Thursday. Goodbye, Roger. My regards to your mother, and not a greeting to that husband of yours. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Well? Well? Well, Roger's coming Thursday. Isn't that wonderful? I, I couldn't help it. He, he literally invited himself and... And when he did, I realized that I, I'd like to have him very much. Well, somehow, it just didn't seem fair to have all this and keep it to ourselves. David, say something. Don't just sit there looking accusing. <laughs> well, you little... Do you think you have to make apologies to us? Well, I, I didn't think I did, but you had that funny look in your eye. You're a nice girl, darling. Thanks. It'll be a nice Thanksgiving. It'll be even nicer. Much nicer. When a shopping spree turns into a shopping struggle, head right for a Coca-Cola cooler and the pause that refreshes. It's surprising how different things look when you shop refreshed. Fortunately, Coke is around the corner from anywhere now, so its delicious ice-cold refreshment is always handy. Hello? Mr. King, is that you? Oh, yes, Mr. Killian. Just called to ask you if you'll be around Thanksgiving Day. Yes, I'll be here. Fine. Say, you don't think I'm imposing on Claudia and David, am I? Oh, don't worry about it. They're glad to have you. Well, I'm glad to come. Anybody else coming? Uh, Claudia and David aren't expecting to ask anybody else, but uh, you never know from today to tomorrow. How right you are. Well, see you Thanksgiving, Mr. King. Goodbye, Mr. Killian. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr, and the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.